In your opinion, what is the worst TV ever made? Any period, just what was the worst experience, the worst one to ever watch? If you said the Casio TV21 pocket television, I would agree with you. These absolutely fascinated me as a kid. Uh, this particular model is from around 1985-86, and I believe it's the second pocket television that Casio made, the first being the TV10 from about 83. And what's interesting is the TV10 was a backlit model. So the way this worked is instead of having an LCD screen and having a light source behind it that shone into your face, the LCD screen was on this little door and it required a pretty bright light source to shine through the LCD. So this outer part here is essentially your backlight and it would reflect down on this mirror. Yes, that's a mirror and onto your face. So not only was this a cheap passive matrix display, but it didn't even have its own backlight. It used this little frosted lens on the back here to try and evenly distribute sunlight through the LCD screen across this mirror and into your face. And in addition, you can kind of see those numbers there. There's a little indicator that moves up and down to tell you what channel you're on. So it's what you would call a, I guess, a digital, digital. like the newer uh, Casio handheld models. The annoying thing about these type of tuners is that they were auto seek. So it would keep moving until it found a strong enough signal to lock onto. But sometimes if your signal was going in and out, you would have trouble tuning it and you'd have to keep going back and forth to find it. Or sometimes it would lock in near the signal, but maybe a little bit off station and you'd have to play with it. But um, yeah, this was a black and white LCD. And uh, let's turn it on here. So actually, before I do that, let's take a look at what it has. You have your tuning up and down buttons, digital. digital. You have your power switch to go between the UHF and VHF band. You have no antenna. You have a two and a half millimeter headphone jack, not three and a half. You have nothing over here. And down here, you have brightness and volume volume but there's no speaker yes not only does this have a two and a half millimeter headphone jack so you had to use either the earphone provided with this or find another two and a half millimeter one not sure how common that was in the 80s but i know in the 90s they weren't all that common uh but you needed that headphone this had no speaker so and it has no antenna either so this does what a lot of walkmans did and it uses the headphones as an antenna, right? Why not? I mean, the user has to use the headphones to watch TV, so let's do that. Let's uh, power this on and see if it'll pick anything up without the headphones. There we go. You can see the snow. You can see my little tuner working its way down. And it didn't pick anything up. And I know there's a station broadcasting. Ooh right now. So let's grab a pair of headphones that are way too modern for this. And I have a little three and a half to two and a half millimeter adapter. Let's power it on and see if we get a station. I've also turned off some of the lights so you might be able to see this a little better. There you go. It's definitely not coming off very well on camera. It looks ever so slightly better in real life. Let's see here. Oh, did I knock it out? Yeah, there we go. It's playing some old Looney Tunes cartoons. If I turn the volume up, it's actually up all the way. Let's see if we can hear anything from these. It must be, is it not up? Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Imagine sitting outside 
trying to squint at this little monochrome display with your headphones in. It's got no, let me shut this off. It's got no built-in, or sorry, no external antenna. So you're kind of at the mercy of having strong TV stations nearby. So I guess use it in the city and hope there's no noise nearby. And yeah, that picture is just insane. But it was affordable. And looking at the price, this was probably the cheapest portable pocket television you could buy. I've seen it advertised as cheap as $60 in the mid 80s, which I mean, is pretty cheap when you think about the tech in this. But what about the competition? So this came out in 85. Um, the predecessor, the TV 10, which was a backlit, uh, but still an LCD, still a passive matrix LCD, came out in 83. What did the competition have? So this would be from the generation of the TV 10. This is the Sony Watchman FD20. And uh, this is the second, I believe it's the second generation of Sony Watchmans. And what these were, instead of an LCD screen, these were a fully fledged CRT and it's a 90 degree CRT. So it's real long going this way. And instead of the beam hitting uh, some phosphors, the electron gun hitting phosphors on a screen and lighting up. So you're, you're, you're hitting them from behind, but you're watching the phosphors from the front. You're actually watching the phosphors from inside the CRT. So imagine instead of the front being like this, it's curved all the way down and kind of goes up like this. And you're looking at the inside of a CRT from the top. It's clear glass instead of, of masked off and painted. That's what this is. It's absolutely wild. And honestly, it works really well. This particular one, I believe it said it was made in 85. I saw a sticker on here. Yeah, manufactured April 1985. So this, while being the FD20, which came out in 1983, let's get this little stand up. While this model is from 1983, this was a later manufactured model from 1985. By 1985, the FD30 was out, which was a little bit narrower and you know more compact. Probably a closer comparison to this one, but hey, you know, these are close enough. Let's get the antenna out. So first off, built-in speaker. Picture is much clearer. I gotta go in there and adjust the horizontal. It tends to bottom out. Yes, sir. I have just a little article. How about a side-by-side -side comparison? We got the Casio TV21. And we got the Sony FD20. Now these are old, old cartoons. Like the quality of this tape is pretty bad. I'll get something a little bit better on here. Here we go. Let's compare them side by side. Passive matrix LCDs were just awful. You can kind of see here. Whoop. See, it's washed out. And then I can just reach that perfect point where most of the screen looks okay. But even so, that looks better. What about battery life? Uh, I would think that having a non backlit passive matrix LCD screen and no built in speaker would make this much more efficient on batteries than having a fully fledged CRT with a speaker in it. Now, I could not find any information in any of the advertisements for these on battery life. Now comparing, this takes two AA's and the Sony takes either four AA's 
or I believe it also took a rechargeable pack. If you look, there's the positive and negative terminal coming off this battery holder, but there are three terminals inside. I'm assuming the third one is for uh, L40. Is that a, another name for a AA, or is that the name of this battery pack? Either way, it had something to do, I'm sure, with having a rechargeable battery pack that went in this. But what I want to do is hook this up to an external power supply and just get a rough idea of the current draw. First up is the Sony Watchman, just because it's easier to power externally. It's got a nice jack. Using the unfortunate negative in the middle that uh, Sony insisted on using until the 90s, which... Ah, it's especially frustrating because I was just using a similar barrel on a newer Sony Watchman that was positive in the middle. So, especially with Sony products, always check the polarity. Anyway, we are looking at, now again, this is pretty rough, but about 300 milliamps at 6 volts. If I crank the volume... Over the hill and just crush him like an ant. So, yeah, we could say about 300, 310 milliamps. So I think, uh, what, on the low side, and one of these alkalines is like 1,800 milliamp hours. So at 300 milliamps, you're looking at about six hours. That's not bad. Uh, now, that's assuming you were using an alkaline battery and not a zinc carbon, like the cheap ones I buy at the dollar store. If I recall correctly, in the 80s, Zinc carbon were still fairly common, like those red Everetti batteries. And those at max were like less than the lowest alkaline. So if you're on the low side of like say 500 uh, milliamp hours, you're looking at just over an hour of watch time on this sucker. So I guess using good batteries in it, six hours, not a lot, but not bad. Significantly more awkward to power off an external power supply, but this seems to work. And we are at 3 volts, drawing roughly 190 milliamps, 200 milliamps. So not that much lower. But you are looking at using the same alkaline example, 9 hours of use instead of the 6 hours. And that's on two batteries instead of four. But I guess the question is, would that have been worth it? You're paying less for this TV. Just for comparison, here's an ad from around 1985 showing the Sony FD20 for just under $160. So yeah, it was definitely cheaper than the Sony. But you're getting way less compared to that. This wins. So then we get into later handheld models uh, that I kind of alluded to from Casio. Got another one from Citizen. This is a Citizen P422 from around 1990-91. Come in their nice little carrying cases. Now each of these takes four double A's, but they are backlit and they are color. Okay, got these set up. Let's power them on. And this one should have a switch here. So first of all, this is awful. That's volume. And thank you for sending Lisa to protect us from the bug you sent. And please make Lisa tell us a bedtime story about robots. Got the brightness. In these passive matrix, you turn the volume down, or sorry. Did he have a brother? Yes, he had a brother. When you turn the brightness down all the way, it affects the, the look of it. It kind of goes inverted. And so you're constantly adjusting the brightness. Too bright, it washes out. Too dark, it affects the angle that you can view it at. So these weren't great. But I would argue that this is way better than that uh, TV21. But what about battery life? So these are using four AA's like the Sony. That one's just atrocious. I, I don't know if that's necessarily because of, uh, because of its age. The other thing is these LCDs would just... Oh, there we go. They would start to go bad. Heat damages them. Cold... Just any sort of improper storage. So you see a lot of these on eBay that just it's, the screen's all 
you know, colors are distorted and ruined from heat. So let's start with the Casio TV 470 from around 1994. It's got your standard buttons that all of these had. Tuning up and down moves your little indicator. Channel call, which brings the indicator back on the screen to see what channel you're on. Your volume and your brightness. This does have a DC input jack. Negative in the middle. Oh, Casio, no. I thought only Sony did that. On the top, we have an external antenna jack, which is nice. And we have a headphone jack on the other side. So no AV jack, but it does have an external antenna, external power, external antenna. I already said that. All right, we're jacked into the back because the barrel connector on here has such a tiny pin, I don't have a connector small enough for it. We are powered on watching the reflection of my room. See the rest of my tiny office there. And 300 milliamps. So about the same as the Sony. So this LCD, this color LCD screen TV, roughly the same screen size, uses the same as that black and white CRT from about 10 years previous. Which means, yeah, this will give you about six hours battery life. Up next we have the Citizen. Not sure who made this, if it was Casio, Epson, maybe Citizen did make their own things. I didn't think, well, I think they did their own LCD stuff. I don't know. Anyway, same controls, channel up and down, and a call button to bring the channel indicator back. It does have these horrible membrane switches that eventually fall apart, though. On the side, same thing as the Casio. Your headphone jack, volume, brightness, um, your power and band selector. This one does have a barrel jack, positive in the middle of this time, input six volts, makes sense. This one has an AV in and an external antenna connection. And it has a tint control. It was at this point that I started going on a rant about how the Casio didn't have a tint control and that NTSC had gotten better over the years and blah, 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 blah. And I completely missed the fact that there's a little adjustment behind the antenna of the Casio called adjust. And that's a tint control. Okay, powered on, we got our Simpsons, and more. So this is drawing closer to 360 milliamps. Interesting. So, yeah, worse picture. Presumably not because of age, could be. And more current draw. Now this is a few years older than the Casio. Before I move on, let's test the AV input on this Epson. I've plugged a signal in. It's going to a VCR off screen that was providing the transmitted signal. See, call tuning does nothing when that's plugged in. Picture quality is good. It's not really coming off on the camera that well, but it's sure a lot clearer than it was. Hold on, Bart. Everything's gonna be just fine. Sounds just fine. So um, yeah, just using a standard Y adapter that goes from stereo three and a half to left and right channel. Left is video, right is uh, audio. Going back to the Sony FD20 for a moment, uh, it has a video input. I'm just gonna plug in here. Now, unfortunately, like I said, the horizontal hold is a little bit off and that's an internal adjustment. Let's see if I can get it to, there we go, come on. Get it to lock. Now, I'm providing audio and video just like I was on the Epson, but you'll notice there's no sound. The jack on the side says video in. It doesn't say AV. It just says video and it is literally just video. So when you plug into this, it's being used as a video monitor. I think it's neat that it has a composite video input, but it's bizarre that it's just video, no audio. One last thing I want to test on this is the external antenna input. Now, normally you'd use a little um, F connector to three and a half millimeter adapter. They're available on Amazon, eBay, wherever. I don't have one, but I do have an F connector to BNC, a BNC to RCA, and a stereo RCA to stereo three and a half. With their powers combined, we can watch TV. 
So I'll flip over to the UHF band. Start tuning. Let's see if we get anything. We do. I make superintendent money, which after. Digital TV boxes are trash. Channel call. You can sort of see it. It's so hard to see. There it is. So yeah, external antenna input works nicely. These membrane buttons are just garbage though. What a shame they just don't seem to last. And these little handheld TVs were made for years. This is a Casio and this is the TV 880. And this is from 1999. It's getting into the late nineties, that early, late nineties, early two thousands, silver aesthetic. And as you can see, it says high resolution. Okay. But it's still a uh, STN panel. It's not a TFT. It's not the nice, bright, active matrix. Casio did sell them. I have seen models that have a nice TFT display, and they look, even in the photos, amazing. But most of the ones they sold were like this. And let's power this on. Get the antenna up. What we got here, brightness and volume. So sound is decent. It, I don't know if it's coming off on camera, but this is a higher resolution. You can see the details a lot better here. Reading text, things like that, but it's still a passive matrix display. And so the color, the contrast, everything is washed out. See this sort of, almost like a burn pattern in the middle? I believe that is the, the LCD aged or damaged from heat. Very common on these old ones. But yeah, it does have much, much better uh, resolution. It's still kind of, kind of crappy, but for a little handheld portable to just watch some TV on, it's decent. Now this one also has an AV input, but it's problematic. Uh, I read that these Casios required, maybe I heard it, Maybe it was Maritime Girl's video. I can't remember, but they needed like a special video cable that had a resistor or something in them. So I've hooked it up. I had to reverse left and right. So now right is video, left is audio. And uh, I mean, the audio is fine. But the the video is, is just all weird. It's kind of hard to see here. Let me go to a different channel. See, it starts okay, and then it kind of goes and washes out and it's almost like the um, the video signal is too bright and I don't really know if a resistor would necessarily fix that because you're, you'd think that the blanking pulse would fix it but look it starts out okay and then just gets all wonky so unfortunately with these Casios your AV input's not usable unless you build a special cable, I guess. I'm, I'm really curious uh, about this now. Will you look at that? That's pretty decent. And I have this potentiometer hooked up very jankily between these two cables going into here. And uh, I think it's just about halfway. Watch what happens when I turn it down. If I turn it up, it washes out. So let's get a value here. That looks pretty decent right there. Let me measure what this resistance is. All right, hard to do uh, one-handed, but it's 2.8 kilo ohm. So if anyone wants to plug AV into some of these Casio TVs, 
just put a 2.8 kilo ohm resistor in line with the video signal. And I mean, the resolution is still trash, but the picture is pretty clear. Let me turn it down. Yeah, see, it starts to get real crap if you start turning it down, lose the color signal. And as you start turning it up, it starts to wash out, wash out. And then that's what it looks like directly connected. Why would you do that, Casio? Is that just like to sell accessories or something? That's lame. And if anyone's curious about the battery life and current draw on this uh, modern, modern 1999 Casio, it does uh, four battery. It takes four batteries, same as the others, but it draws a whopping 420 milliamps. Oof. For those doing the math at home, that's a whopping just over four hours of battery life on four 1800 milliamp hour double A's. Just before I end this though, I, I want to just go back to this Sony FDL 370 that in my mind is still the winner among all these. The gold standard in picture. Now, being that this one has such a bigger speaker, better picture, better everything, well, what's the battery life situation? First off, this runs on nine volts instead of six like the others and three like the TV21, and it uses C cell batteries. And the current consumption, according to my not very precise current readout here, is just over half an amp at nine volts. The internet says, you know, typical alkaline will give you 8,000 milliamp hours, which means this would give you 14 hours, possibly higher if you find like a better one. Now I'm sure all of you have heard the rumors that... Now the downside is of course, this thing's heavier because of the C cell batteries. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's a much better set. Man, this my janky way to adapt through five different things. Who would have thought there'd be so much signal loss through this? <laughs>